Hey, what is up you guys and welcome to this episode of Eddie's Customs and Restorations. So today we have here a 2012 GMC Acadia. The condition that this truck has is every now and then it won't crank and sometimes it won't even shut off. So when they when they turn it on, you know, runs, drives just like normal, no issues whatsoever, park somewhere and they turn the key back and it does not turn off. It stays running. Then hooked up my scan tool and pulled out a code for an ignition switch, which, you know, I had already initially thought that would be the problem. But nonetheless, you always want to double check and verify things with a scan tool because sometimes it can be a different issue that may be acting like a certain issue that you've dealt with before, but if they're connected or if they're somehow related to each other, they can both have the same effect. So in this case, we're gonna tackle the ignition switch which is located in the steering column. So let's get started. Before you get started on this procedure, you wanna make sure you disconnect your battery. On a 2012 GMC Acadia, the battery is located behind the passenger. This customer has this nice rubber floor mat all the way across. We're well, gonna lift that up and right here you have the battery compartment. So, you're going to pull on this, and you're going to remove that. You're going to disconnect your ground cable, and you're going to use a 10 millimeter wrench to, to do that. And when you disconnect it, make sure that it doesn't touch the battery again. You're going to pull this panel off, simply get your fingers wedged in between there. And it's just held on by a series of clips. And once you have pulled those clips off, just pull it out. Now we can grab a hold of this panel down here. Let's start popping it loose. If you have plastic pry tools, that always helps. Do yourself a favor, do not use steel pry tools because you will scratch this plastics. Okay, so you need to always use plastic with plastic to prevent damage. Okay, down here we have this plastic panel. It's being held on by a plastic clip. I'll show you once I remove it. So what you do is you stick that pry tool in between here and you pull this little deal up. See how it goes in and out? And once you pull it out, you can just pull everything out together. Okay, then we bring this panel down out of the way. And we expose two screws down here. There's one, there's one here, and then there's another one on this side. Should be seven millimeter screws. Once we've got that, we're going to give this a quick tug towards us, okay, and it was being held on by that tab and this one on that side as well. And then we have the headlight switch right here, you're going to push down on this tab and pull it out at the same time. Then we have another couple of screws. 7 millimeters. Then we're going to have two more screws up top over here. Um, 7 millimeter. I'm going to need a swivel on this one because of the angle that I'm at to use my cordless ratchet. Give this a quick tug towards you. 
towards yourself. You don't want to bend this. You want to make sure you're you're pulling. You want to make sure you're pulling as straight as you can. Okay. Now let me bring this down. I have to bring the steering column down in order to get this out. Okay, another thing you want to do is you want to you want to pull your lever down, the one where it allows you to adjust your steering column, and you want to pull it all the way out towards yourself. Reason for that, that way we can get these covers out and we're able to press this deal back as far back as it, as it possibly can. And you see how it's behind it already? Now we're going to have the space to get these out. Some people may say that you don't even have to get this far into it, but in order to not break stuff, that's the best way to do it in my opinion. Down here at the bottom, we're going to have another series of screws. Okay, and this right here is a scary part for a lot of people. You need to separate these three pieces. It's one, two, and three. Okay, so you're gonna pull on one of them. Just pick one, and this is the easiest one to me. So I'm gonna pull. Wait, hang on a sec. There we go. I'm gonna pull down on this one. Alright, so I already separated that side, now I gotta separate this one, and I kinda like picking them in, into this line so that I can separate them. Once you do that, you can bring that arm down. Right. Move up here to the top. And pull this guy up. And now it's out. And the other piece just fell down. This one is hanging here from for dear life. And here's your ignition switch right there. That's the one that we'll be replacing right now. Okay, and this one, we're just gonna tuck it up, up here. All right, and get it out of the way like that. And then, we're gonna get a Torx 20, which is the size of the two, the two uh, screws that are holding the ignition switch or starter switch in place and it helps to have a very small ratchet like this one all right I got this one at O'Reilly's it's that Titan brand it's very small I mean it's about the size of my finger uh, and it works perfect for under dash projects or stuff like that There's one. And be careful because these screws are very short. They come out real quick. Right. After that, pull it out and you're gonna have your connector and where where you have your red tab right there you gotta pull that tab up 
you need to pull that tab up to release it like that okay see how it's up a little bit and then you're gonna push on the black part on the black tab and pull it push in and out if, if it's not coming out on the first try then we didn't pull this red tab out far enough there you go now next thing you always want to do is compare your new one to your old one make sure that they have the same the same amount of prongs inside and that everything else is the same so what we need to do now is match up the way the cylinder was facing before okay on this one it's in the run position it looks like and on this one it's in the off position of course right so when we install our new one we are going to turn the key until it slides into place so I'm gonna hold it right up against it in the hole and I'm gonna start turning the key and then it's gonna fall into place Okay, just put the key in. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the starter switch. And I'm gonna place it right where it wants to be. And then I'm gonna start rotating the key. And there you go, it fell in. It went right into place where it wants to be. All right. And that click, it was because I turned the key back to the off position. And then make sure that it goes to the start position right there it's spring loaded right and it's going to that start position when you go back it's okay if it doesn't let you take your key out okay um, that's normal the ignition you know everything's dead batteries dead and all that it's not gonna let you take your key out it's actually not gonna let you bring the key back okay so what you want to do at this point is, you know, put your two fasteners back on. That way it's nice and secure and then hook your connector back on. And after that, you go back to your battery, plug in the ground and try it. You know, after you hook up your ground, everything here should actually be lit up. You should actually have some lights. Don't try to crank it. Not yet anyway. So you're gonna have your, your battery plugged in now, right? You're gonna come over here and then it's our, everything's already gonna be semi lit up over here. And then you're just gonna do that. You're just gonna mess with it back and forth like that to the key on and back and key on. You're gonna do that just to make sure that everything's functioning to where you know that you still have that extra travel to start it. Okay, you just want that for a peace of mind just so you know that everything's going on as it should, you know, because you actually can put those things clocked a little bit wrong to where you end up doing this and that's all the way it goes. It doesn't let you go into the the full crank. Um, I've never I've never seen that happen when when you replace just a starter switch. But um, if you take anything else apart in here, you may run that risk. Uh, so yeah, as long as you as long as you've done everything you've seen on the video so far exactly this way, you should end up with this result. Okay. But like I said, don't be alarmed if your keys don't come out. That's that's fine. That's okay. Okay, so let's get back to putting everything back together. I'm gonna reconnect the connector. Push the red clip back in and start the reverse process of everything. Put this one back there. Lower this back down. Put it the way it needs to be. Right, slide it right there. That's where it was at, more or less. And I say more or less because you kind of got to put everything like that first and kind of get it all up in there before before uh, closing everything off. Okay, so right there. And now since you left your battery connected, you're able to remove your keys. You're going to have to remove your keys. And here is the example of what you see when you first reconnect your battery. That's what we'll be showing. You know, it'll be in that. 
some lights but you won't have all the check engine or any of that stuff on it's just gonna be the the backlighting and you won't be able to turn this back okay all you'll be able to do is turn it forward so what you want to do at this point is turn it forward to the on position like that and then bring it all the way back and now you're able to bring it back and now you can remove your key now you can put this piece back on which I was gonna say I needed both hands to do it but never mind but I am gonna need both hands to do the next step which is <clears throat> which is putting all these three pieces together kinda like a puzzle so the first one you want to align is the one from the keyhole and then you'll align the top one to that one I'm gonna go with the top first so I'll make the top snap in first like that and then I'll move down to the bottom you can break them they're very small screws That was me, I honked with my arm. But yeah, you gotta put those little the little guides or whatever that are gonna hold the top of this cluster on there. And then just simply push it into place. Reconnect your headlight switch. Just push it. Push it in until it clicks. line there's there's the uh, the pop-in clips and push those in <laughs> then you got the two screws that go at the bottom you want to put those back goes right up here Well, there you have it guys. Vehicle starts with no problem. Shuts off with no problem. If you found value in this video, please hit that like button so that it lets YouTube know that this is good content and it can continue to push this video forward and help other viewers. Until next time, y'all be good.